Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to a pickup video. So what I thought I'd do is break up the monotony of the PlayStation 3 videos. I've only got one left to do anyway. Um, but I think you've all been PlayStation 3'd out. So what I thought I'd do is share with you my pickups for the last month. Um, those are games from the early years of my gaming history. Games I would have played back in the early 80s. Games that were probably released in the late 70s even. So yeah, it's about 40 years almost of... Uh, Gaming history here, right to the present day game I'm playing today, which I'm thoroughly enjoying at the minute. So without further ado, we'll crack on with some Atari. So the first game I've got to show you is Breakout. Now seller was listing a load of games, just cartridge only, for a pound start bid. So I thought I'd bid on, on, on all of them, in the hope I might get one or two. But I've got Breakout, which is probably one of my least favourite games, to be honest. I'm not into those kind of bat and ball games. It's a very early Arkanoid style game. Um, again, I like said cost me one pound, probably two pound twenty, including post, I think. Then another chap listed a load of Atari games, boxed, which is something I'm finding difficult to pick up. Boxed Atari games at a decent price. So this guy listed ten for eighty pound by now. So offered him fifty. We met in the middle, sixty-five as you do, and um, yeah, nice condition boxes, and most of them are complete. So I've kept five, and I'm gonna flip the other five just to try and contribute back to that sixty-five pounds. Now, something I've always done, really, so I've always bought games in bundles, especially in the early days of collecting uh, a particular collection, because it's the easiest way to do it. Get quite a few games quite quickly, and you can raise some funds back by selling the duplicates. It's just when you get towards the end, when you can't really do that, it then proves to be bloody expensive. So the first game I'm going to show you, first games I'm going to show you, the two I've never played before. First one is a game called Dodgem. What I love about this bloody box art is the vivid colours. Now back then you didn't really have pastel colours, you just got pink. Dark pink or light pink. No screenshots on the back, another anomaly. But most of these games are from 1980 and I didn't realise on the spine. It's almost like a, a library number on the bottom there. CX2637, so quite an early game. And the lowest number is Combat, which I think is 2601. But yeah, Dodger is a game that looked a bit like Pac-Man when I first put it on. But you've got two cars at opposite ends of the grid or opposite ends of the maze. You've got to pick up all like, the little pellets without hitting each other. And that's the premise of the game. And there's three games included in that one. I've not tried the other three out. I guess they're just variants of the same game, really. So yeah, not bad. Again, we'll try it out. We'll give it a go. But it's a bit like combat. I think you need two players to play it. The next game I kept simply because it's got a bit of history about it. The first... It was a first third-person driving game. Sort of a bit like Pole Position to be released in the arcade by Atari in 1976. This was their conversion of it for their home console, and that's Night Driver. Never played the arcade version. I think I played this years ago. Didn't enjoy it, to be honest. It's bloody hard. But it's literally set on a black screen with, uh, I think you've got like poles either side just to highlight where the road sort of ends. And oncoming traffic, but yeah, it's brutally hard. But yeah, nice one to have, just because of its story, really. Being sort of one of the earliest games of its type if not the earliest game of its type. Now next up are three games I have played. The first one is Missile Command, which was quite a recent... I think I quite recently got into this. I remember it years ago, but didn't really like it. I think it's because I was probably playing, playing it without using a paddle controller. But yeah, it's a fantastic game. The arcade game is legendary. The Atari conversion is actually very good. Bear in mind how... Uh, underpowered the system was. So I quite enjoy Missile Command. I'm not very good at it. It doesn't take long before it goes absolutely bananas. But yeah, it's a cracking game. And that colour scheme, bloody orange. Jesus Christ. And the next one is blue as you like. Space Invaders. Now this one's got lots of nostalgic memory for me. We rented this game years ago when we got our Atari. Um, we also rented the TV we played it on. That's <laughs> hilarious. It's either a Ferguson or a Pi colour telly. It was around 1982, so I always remember sort of Channel 4 starting back up again as well. I remember videos having like X's on them and not flipping age restrictions, which I think was something that was changed even in the early 80s or late 70s. But some of the videos we got, well, well, we got, I didn't get them because obviously I was only about flipping seven years old, eight years old then. But yeah, I always remember the X's on them. I thought, bloody hell, what does X mean? But anyway, Space Invaders, a cracking game, cracking conversion, and it was only quite recent that I kind of understood what flipping clock meant. Because back in the day you'd be, okay, yeah, I clocked that, yeah, I clocked that, and I thought, well, oh, 
that's just meant you beat the game, but obviously not. It's to do with the flipping score going back to zero again. It's weird how certain phrases like, I clocked it, kind of stuck with you for flipping years until it dawned on you that actually it doesn't mean what you thought it meant all those years. So Space Invaders is a cracking game. Love it. Even today I still play this game and can clock it. Brilliant. But I can't clock the bloody invisible one because that's flipping hard. A cracking game, so I'm pleased to get that one. And the next one is Asteroids, which is another cracking game. 66 games on that one. Yeah, I could clock this one as well in the standard mode. Can't play it in any other bloody mode, it's flipping rock hard. But I used to play this one a lot around my neighbour's place, and he used to have the Atari Vader edition, the black one, which was flipping awesome. One I've got in the collection today, I haven't actually got the original one, or one like the original one I had, which is the um, Light Sixer. I would love to get a heavy sixer. Very collectible, very hard to find in the UK. Um, more common in North America, because obviously that's where they were released very early on. But Asteroid is a cracking game, really pleased to have it. Another one of those like horrible colours really. Very vivid. I do I do like them because they're like historical, I guess, but the actual colours themselves are flipping horrible. I mean if you look at them together, bloody hell, look at that. I've got some more downstairs which I'm going to sell on, but when they're all together, they just look they look good, but at the same time, they look horrible. I can't really explain it. But yeah, that's the five, six Atari games i got. I would like to get probably about, I don't know, 40 or 50, but that's it. Beyond that, I've got quite a few games that I'm missing. Games like Frog I used to love, Donkey Kong, which was a really poor conversion, but I played it and I did enjoy it. Um, Fast Food might be another one, Dragster, Grand Prix. There's quite a few I've got on my little list, but I'd only pick them up if they're in conditions like that, which is sort of, sort of six sevens. Anything less than that, I don't really want to have them because I just want to appreciate them, I suppose, or like, won't like them. All right, next up then is, um, yeah, Spectrum. We all know what, I do enjoy my Spectrum pickups. I do enjoy my Ocean pickups, not that you noticed. But I've got the rest of the Ocean games I've got to show you, bar one. Um, I'm still missing, I'm missing two, potentially getting one of those, um, difficult games to get, and I'm missing, I think, two more, which are more to, more like, um, what are they called, development software packs, so I've got them on other systems, but I don't have them on the Spectrum, and they're not that difficult to get, they do come up, so that's good news. So the first game I'm going to show you, in fact there's two games, but they're the same game, by the same company, under two different names, or under two different company names. And that game is called Robotics, which was released under the Ocean label. After it was first released under the Spectrum Games label, which was the precursor to Ocean Software, as Frenzy. Now, someone commented in one of my videos, Frenzy was actually the sequel to Berserk. Now, these games are Berserk um, rip-offs, really. Very good. I quite enjoy them. Not a bad conversion. Unofficial conversion, of course, on the Spectrum. But, yeah. I thought I'd share those with you. I've done a video with all the Spectrum games in it that I've got. I think I've got four of them. It should have been nine, but I don't think all nine of them were released. Yeah, use exactly the same artwork. I think the loading screen is slightly different. But it's a really good fun game to play, and I think both of these set me back about 30 quid each. Which is quite expensive, but they're really hard to find. So I thought I'd share those with you, even though I think I've shown you in a video before. Right, next up are the Ocean Box games. First up is a, well, a very famous franchise, isn't it? The Simpsons. Bart vs. The Space Mutants. A game I've never played. Never appealed to me. I liked the cartoon back in 1990, whatever it was, 1991. But I never played the game. Complete with its little badge, which is always a nice uh, nice touch. Again, this was quite cheap. I think I got this as part of a bundle. I can't remember what was in the bundle. I've got a feeling it might have been Pang um, and a couple of other games which are complete like this. So I bought those and I sold off the ones I already had to recoup some of the money back. Uh, next up is a game I had on the ST. I used to like this game. Uh, it's an arcade conversion, Shadow Warriors, on the ST, but it had a strange flip screen thing going on. And the game itself was quite boring. Mechanically, all we did was punch, kick, and throw them across the screen. And 90% of the time, I just chucked these people around because it was easier. So you stood there toe to toe, generally you got, well, you got your ass kicked. But yeah, it's one of the first games you could interact with the um, street furniture. You could hang from lampposts, chuck people into phone boxes and stuff like that, which was pretty different. But again, nothing else inside the box, really, just a baggy cassette and instructions. 
a very cheap game to get hold of. Probably cost a couple of quid. Next up is WWF WrestleMania. Not really into wrestling. Never have been, to be honest. Not since the good old days of Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks. Another great British invention, wrestling. Well, that style of wrestling, anyway. There you go, complete with figures. Again, part of the same bundle I think I got The Simpsons with. Never really played it. Uh, my brother was really big into wrestling, but he's about seven years younger than me, so he really enjoyed it. Next up is a classic arcade conversion from the golden era. Well, for me anyway, I know a lot of people remember the arcades from the very early days. I don't. Uh, I suppose for me, most of the arcades would have been games like this that I remember. I do remember Space Invaders and that, in the odd sort of smoky pub, but sort of place you can't really go into, is it, a pub when you're really young? So I used to go in there very quick, probably to pick my old man up or whatever, get dragged back out of him, but I always got caught a glimpse of the arcade cabinet. Operation Thunderbolt, a really good conversion on the Spectrum, lots going on, very busy. I find it quite hard as well, actually. A very good conversion. Certainly recommend that on, on probably every home system, or home computer system. I had it on the ST and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Next up is another decent arcade conversion, a flipping hard one. That's Narc. Again, very cheap game this is. For some reason, people don't really like it, but I thought it was really good. A lot easier to play than the Amiga version, which you might have seen on one of my Spotlight videos. Again, complete with instructions, baggy, and cassette. In the, so I suppose that was the golden era for Ocean Software as well, in their uh, arcade conversion days. Chase HQ2, nothing like the original, unfortunately. Spectrum version is quite poor. It's a shame really, so I think they used their own in-house team to develop the first one and then must have uh, got a third party developer to make this one. Unfortunately it's not particularly good. Better on the 16-bit machines. Next up is uh, another opportunistic pickup. I've already got Batman on the Spectrum. This is the Plus 3 disc copy. I did actually buy a bundle of Plus 3 disc games. I kept this and I kept the next one. So yeah, I sold the other four or five on. I think I got most of my money back, so these are pretty much free of charge. I'd love to have the full set on floppy disk, but that is a massive, massive ask. So where where well where there's an opportunity to pick them up on floppy disk, I will do that. Will that fail? Next up is Chase HQ, probably the finest arcade conversion on the spectrum by Ocean Software. Arguably for definite. An absolutely cracking game. Never completed this one. Got to, to, towards the end of it. But again, I had this on the ST, which was inferior, believe it or not. The Spectrum version. And as with Batman, I picked up another copy of it as part of that same bundle. So, yeah. Good old plus three discs. Now, interestingly enough, Chase HQ2 only came out on cassette on the Spectrum. You couldn't, you couldn't get it on cassette on the Amstrad, and you couldn't get it on cassette on the Commodore 64. So it's the only format where it's actually... Uh, on, on tape. Right, I've got two more Spectrum games to show you. One more Ocean game. I've had this one before. I sold it when the Amstrad disc version came up. Then I kind of questioned myself, why do I do that when I try and get a, every single Ocean game on a Sinclair Spectrum? That's Mad Balls. I think I sold my original copy of this for about 35 I think I bought this one for 35 but I sold it to recoup the money for the Amstrad one, which I think was about 50 quid. But at least the Amstrad version is complete with stickers. Now these are based on a toy that was released in the 80s. A toy I don't really remember, to be completely honest. Have a look on eBay, they're flipping ghastly looking things. Must be something that David Retro Games played bird, Badly Birdsall showed in one of his uh, pickup videos. One of his most recent pickup video. Look at him. What the hell's all that about, Dave? Eh? Blimey, they're quite collectible. Quite valuable little figures to own as well. Uh, next up is a game I've been after for ages. This one was quite controversial um, back in the day because it was a game that had already been already been released but repackaged by US Gold. That's World Cup Carnival. My memory for this game stems back to the Commodore 64. The same guy who owned the Vader Atari also owned the Commodore 64. This one came a couple of days ago, cost me £5.50. Decent condition, but it's complete with all the... Uh, bits and bobs, the little patch there, the wall charts, poster, stickers, the lot. 
Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I've been after this for ages. I would like it on the Commodore 64, because that's what I played it on originally. If you ever played the Arctic version of World Cup, from about 1984, yeah, they used that exact same game with this. So, yeah, very controversial. And the game itself, for 1986 release, was absolutely abysmal. So I think the US Gold got a bit of flack for that. But it's a nice collectible item to have, because it's a nice... Oh, well, you've got some nice bits and bobs inside it. I remember that particular World Cup, because it's the first World Cup I ever watched. I think it's the first World Cup my old man gave me a beer. I think I was about 12. And um, my mate used to collect for the Pini sticker books for Mexico 86. And I think he had almost completed it. It's one or two players he couldn't find. I think it's the first time and last time I ever tried to collect for uh, a Panini sticker book myself. So that's it. So like I said, ocean-wise, there's not many left to pick up now. Four. There's four left. Um which is no mean feat in itself. Now, I've got one more game to show you on the old 8-bits, and that's a compilation I picked up from Holland, or the Netherlands. An ocean compilation, I do like picking these up, and that's high voltage. I do like picking up these very obscure European ocean compilations. I sold a lot of the UK release ones, because they're, they're really common, but the ones I've kept are these. Now, again, this is on floppy disk as well. I ain't got a flipping clue what that says. But yeah, floppy disks, the big kind of floppy disks. Look at that. It's quite interesting watching Cyber Snake Jay's pickup video, his Commodore 64 video, funny enough. Earlier on today, talking about he owned a disk drive for his Commodore 64 back in the day. That must have cost some bunts. But yeah, I've had a couple of games like this before. For the 64. Yeah, I think that one set me back about 16 quid, I think, roughly about that, maybe 20, including post. Yeah, I'll never be able to play because I haven't got a Commodore 64 with a floppy disk drive. So that's it for the old, older stuff. Next up is PlayStation. PlayStation 1, to be precise. Some of these games I had, some of these games I remember in the magazine and wanting. Um, mostly cracking games as well. And the first one is from a franchise I absolutely loved. A good mate of mine at work had it on his PC, had it on my Amiga. But the sequel I never played, and that's Terror from the Deep. Now these games a while ago used to go for more money than they do today. I remember, trying to, I remember trying to pick up the original on this back in the early 2000s and they were going for about £35-40. Pounds. Whereas nowadays, I mean this one I think set me back £16. Pounds. Whereas the original goes for about £30, pounds, maybe less nowadays. But it's a cracking series of games. I played the remake they did about five or six years ago on the PC, which was brilliant. I really enjoyed it. Certainly one to load up and play. Next one at the time was the best one-on-one -on -one beat I've ever played in my life. That's Tekken 2. I played Battle Arena to Shinden. I never played the original Tekken. But I played this one and bought this one. My mate used to flip and kick my ass on this game though, but it was a graphical feat. It was absolutely fantastic. Very good introduction. But yeah, in the big double case as well, which is ideal. That's how I like it. Again, that one's quite cheap. Maybe £5, £6. I tend to buy my PlayStation 1 games individually, because if you buy them in bundles, you tend to just get a, a load of plastic turned up in a box, bits and pieces everywhere, and in generally shit condition, to be completely honest. So I'd rather pick and choose my PlayStation games, which is a bloody expensive way of doing it. Um, hence, I don't want to go for a full set of nothing. I just want about 150, maybe 200 games max in the collection. So games I used to love, I used to... I suppose remind me of that era when the PlayStation came out, sort of between 95 and 97. Um, and games that made the system sell really well. This isn't one of them, Magic Carpet. I bought this game and didn't like it, I've got to be completely honest. I mean, anything related to Peter Molyneux or Bullfrog, especially games like Populous and Powermonger, this one looked good, but when I played it, I didn't like it, I've got to be completely honest. But I did enjoy games like Black and White on the PC. Again, quite a cheap game. Nice condition as well. Most of these are actually in decent condition. Next up is a game I played on the PC, which is Quake 2. A cracking, conver a cracking conversion, a cracking sequel to the original game. At a time when the 3D graphics cards were becoming all the rage. I played this on my uh, Voodoo 2 on my PC. looked really good, to be honest. Not sure if that front cover is actually taken from a screenshot from the game, because his face looks a little bit like pixelated and square. Yeah, good game. I think only Quake 2 got a release on the PlayStation. I think, I think its sequel and the original one weren't released on the system. That's, of course, I'm completely wrong. 
Next up is a game, or a type of game I used to love a lot on my Amiga. Uh, and that's Transport Tycoon. I used to love these sorts of uh, simulation games. SimCity and all. Again, released by Ocean Software in conjunction with Micro Pros. So quite a late Ocean game. Never played it, but I remember seeing it in PlayStation, or the official PlayStation magazine. I always wanted it. I forgot all about it until I see it come up on a uh, PlayStation search that I did. So yeah, really tough to get. That was about £7.50. The last game I've been after for ages. Bloody ages, in fact. I think I got it on the Sega Saturn. Violent game, very colourful game. But I only ever played it on a demo. That was loaded. Now, you've got to be quite loaded to pick this up these days, because it's quite an expensive game. Well, not that expensive, but for a PlayStation title, and for a game that was quite common. It costs, I think it set me about £27. I got out bid about a week before on one that went for about 40 quid, so I was quite surprised how much that went for. And it still continued the theme really with a really cool artwork on the front, which unfortunately kind of like disappeared throughout this sort of generation. But yeah, released by Gremlin Interactive as they were called. Cracking game though, a game I'd love to get back on the PlayStation and play. Or put in the PlayStation and play if you know what I mean. So it brings me to my latest pickup. Now I've saw old um, Glory Hunter. Glory Hunter 84. Or was it 82? 82, isn't it? Keep getting it mixed up. And that state's gone. The game that I think is really good. Now I read a review on it, it got some quite crappy reviews. I think one one site gave it 5 out of 10. Now, I was quite surprised because it's going on about the bloody story. Now I, I know games have got decent stories in them nowadays but the emphasis shouldn't be on a frigging story it's a frigging game for god's sake as a standalone game it's good it's got some dodgy flipping acting in it uh, not quite as bad as the old resident evil days but yeah it's not the best i guess i guess that's what they're talking about but what does it matter when you're battering zombies heads all over the flipping place it's a cracking little game i've got to say uh, the collection edition itself isn't bad it's not as big as i expected i think i did share that with scott and the actual uh, bike inside, which is the actual uh, model, isn't as big as uh, I expected it to be. But there you go. I think this one sold out really quick. But yeah, thoroughly enjoying the game. Got some fantastic graphics. Plays quite well. Can be quite monotonous. I've got to be honest at times. A bit like playing Assassin's Creed or Red Dead Redemption. You do the side quests and they're quite similar. But yeah, I think it's really good. I think I've played this game now for about 15, 16 hours. And I'm getting into it. And it's pretty cool. But it's not, it's not like one of those games that is sensational, but it's certainly not a bad game either. I'll shut up about that now. But that's it for my pickups for this month. I do have more, as always. Um, not a lot more, though. It's finally dwindling down. I'm finally catching up with myself. But yeah, some more Spectrum titles. No Ocean, though. So that makes a nice change, doesn't it? But quite a lot of other games that I had back in the day. Games that I absolutely loved. Um, Eager Wise, I picked up a shooter. I've been after for ages, which I got on the Atari ST. Bit of an opportunistic pickup. Uh, a couple of Commodore 64 games. One was a bargain, to be completely honest. I've got some Amstrad games, which are very similar to the special ones I've just shown you, so I'm not probably going to bother showing you those anyway. And a few Atari ST games. But yeah, I've not got my eye on much at the moment because I'm getting, like I said, towards the end of what I want. So yeah, it'd be nice to play catch up, get to a point where actually. Yeah, I can sort myself out and then probably think about something different. But I wanted to sort of consolidate what I got first. Which is probably ideal for me, really. So I am running out of space. We'll get around to a game room tour at some point, but I'm going to sort of walk around most of it because literally it's scattered everywhere. All around the bloody place. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you guys again real soon. So take care. Bye for now.